So spring is all good and popular, but it's kind of getting old. The new big thing in your resume would be Angular, of course. In this presentation, we'll talk how to bring these two together. So recruiters run after you. So I work for a company called Ferrata Systems. We are doing consulting, we are doing training. These days I do mainly Angular training. Uh, I wrote several books. This is the latest one. It's about Angular 2 development with TypeScript. Number two is kind of misleading because the, the current version is number four, but it's still the same framework. So what's in the agenda? First, I will try to show you quickly an app that has a simple Spring Boot server and Angular. I will generate a fresh application, uh, fresh Angular app in front of you if the internet is fine. And then I'll deploy it under the Spring Boot. This part has nothing to do with JHipster. I think I'll need like 15 minutes for this. Then I'll switch to complete generation for the co of the code of the entire app having front end, having Spring on the back, using JHipster. JHipster is an open source project. It's also pretty popular in the Java developers world. To start, I want to make this statement that I always believed and I still believe that good frameworks make you write less code. So whenever somebody compares frameworks, and I've seen many of those, in many cases, I, I read documentation that says how much stuff I need to do just to make this framework alive. This is bad framework. These days we use a lot of code, generation, code generators, so there is not much boilerplate code to be written. And Spring, obviously, especially Spring Boot, is known for this. So it's an opini uh, opinionated runtime for Spring Project, obviously, you know, Spring, Spring Boot. And what I will do, I will create this simple Spring Boot controller. It has everything, including the database. My database has three products, right? And the API is simple. If my URL has slash API slash product, if I am making get, get requests, I should get all these three products back on the client side as JSON. And uh, I will not be generating it from scratch. This one is pretty simple to do. I will just start this server. I will hit it, hit this URL, no angle for now, just to make sure that I'm getting three products, my database, right? So let me go, let me go to to the idea, and what I will do, this is my code, right, that I just showed you, that's the one. And uh, I will just start this app. And see this idea, in the next version they are planning to make it optional, indexing files, right, so it will not take half of the time. <coughs> All right, so I'm running this app, and then I'll go to the browser, and I'll just make sure that the data is coming back. That will be the first part, part so we'll have the server up and running. Mm, let me see if it's still if there is there. Oh. Uh, see, I have already deployed section of Angular. This, is, this would be cheating. So I will delete this app now. This is a beautiful front end created by Angular. I don't want it. So what I will do, you don't like the front end, the simpler the better. See, this code is already deployed from my previous demo. I'm sorry for this. I will just delete it to make it clean, right? Let me hit it again. Actually, I believe I will need to restart the Spring Boot app. Yeah, because the static, static parameters are still uh, served by the old instance. So what I will see now is the JSON coming back, pure JSON, no Angular, nothing. Actually, not even. And why not even? Because I'm hitting 8080. I never configure the REST endpoint to respond if there is no uh, fragment URL after that, right? Because I, I configure slash API slash products, right? So let me fix that real quick. So I'll do this, and I got my data. So what do we have now? We have a server running and serving JSON. Done. Now we need to recreate this beautiful front end in Angular from scratch. How to do that? Anybody work with Angular with the latest version or no? Just one person, come on. You're getting old fashioned. All right, so what I will do, you know, you have to know these guys. I mean, for the enterprise, this is the best thing. So 
let me go to this folder. In this folder, I have just the server directory, right? I'll go inside. I mean, I'll open up the command window. And I'll be using a tool to generate the whole front end. And that tool is called Angular CLI. It's a command line tool. So what I'm saying is I want to generate a client. ng new client. ng is at Angular CLI. A year ago, many people who who started moving to Angular 2, they were complaining that it takes too much to learn. Many configuration files, how do I start, how do I configure bundlers, tests, uh, TypeScript compiler, we use TypeScript because it's much better than just writing in JavaScript. Any Java developers feels at home with TypeScript. During the last two, two years, probably, TypeScript became, by the Stack Overflow Developer Survey, the third most loved language. Two years ago, you didn't even know that this thing exists, right? But it is. So it, you write in TypeScript, and it gets compiled into JavaScript, and your, browser, um, your browsers mm, do JavaScript. So the project is generated now. See, it's done. All these files are generated, and all dependencies were installed from the npmjs.org, which is an equivalent of uh, Maven Central in the JavaScript world. There are 400,000 packages out there already. So all dependencies were, were installed. So what I will do now, I go to WebStorm, and I will open this newly generated project, which is located in Documents, Documents, Spring Days, and NYC, in the client. That's the one that you have generated. See? 11.59 AM. Check your watch. I don't cheat. I am opening, <laughs> I'm opening exactly what I promised. I'm using typically WebStorm. It's also a product of JetBrains for front end and IDEA for the back end. But you can use IDEA for everything if you prefer. You can use Eclipse. You can use uh, a free product from uh, free product is called uh, Visual Studio Code for front end. So uh, basically, lots of options. So this is a project that was generated for me, right? And as a matter of fact, I will let me open a terminal. Let me run it. Uh, run this project and g serve what will happen it'll build the bundles uh, modern mm, angular apps are a bunch of files and uh, you may have hundreds of files in your app so before deployment you need to bundle them up so the user will not be making hundreds of requests but it'll retrieve several files so the the bundles are ready and if i will go to the port local host a local host 4200 default port you will see you will see my app see it's done so the app is ready it generated for me one component application component which comes with CSS which comes with uh, tests which comes with the uh, HTML so this is what was generated for me I don't want it I want to replace this front end with my front end which you already saw which will show me three products served by spring book boot app Right? That's the plan. So what I will do, I'll go back to my generated app, and this is an app component. I'll go to app component, and this is a code that you see over here. I don't want it, right? So, but this code has CSS, it has HTML. Uh, let me let me see if I can remove it. Uh, this one. See how I can type quickly. All right, so that's, that's the app. That's a different front end. I am uh, connecting to the server with the URL, with, a, with an endpoint, API product. I do not specify local host and port or anything. Why? Because I'm going to deploy this app in the same server. Spring Boot with Tomcat, it will go right there. So that's why I don't need to even specify what I need to do. If I will... Uh, by the way, I don't know if you noticed on the terminal, as I was changing my code, the bundles were being rebuilt in memory. So this is my typical development mode. I keep changing code, it rebuilds, rebuilds, rebuilds. And if I will go to, to localhost 4200 now, what do you think is going to happen? Nothing, right? Why? Because I'm getting an error. I'm trying to make a request to the localhost 4200, which is a web development server that comes with Angular, actually, if anybody knows web packets from there. 
Ah, actually, it's even more. It says I don't have a provider for HTTP. When you create a, an Angular app, if you want to use a module that will talk to the HTTP server, you need to declare it. All right, let me fix that part. I'll go to the module part. Module is a place where you list all the components that you have. And what I want to do, I want to add HTTP module. HTTP module. It was imported in there. Let me save it. And it's supposed to rebuild it. Is it rebuilt? Uh, there is red underline, right. Uh, what is this red underline? TS lint. No, it's not a mistake. It's a linter. Linter doesn't like that I put too many spaces. Let, let, let's keep it this way. All right, so it's almost there. I already see a title, right? But I'm getting four or four down there. There's no title, there's no product. Why? Who knows why? Why aren't I getting products? Exactly, I'm, right. I'm trying to find products in 4200. 4200 is my web dev server, while Spring Boot is running on port 8080, right? No good. So what I want to do, there are a couple of ways to do this. In development, I, I would create a proxy. So I keep running my dev server, but the request from 4200 would be proxied to 8080. It's easy to do. But we don't have time for this, so I will just, what I will do, I will just deploy the app. How do I deploy the app? All the bundles that I built in, over here are built in memory. They're not files. It's convenient for development. I want to make them files, and I want to copy them over under the Spring Boot. How to do this? And it's a typical process. You would need to, how do you deploy things? You rebuild them, you, re, you remove the directory out there in the destination, you create a new one, and you copy stuff over. Yeah, so that's the process. I think I have a couple of slides on this as well. Uh, I'll show you, and then I'll do this. So Angular is the framework. Angular CLI is the, the thing that I use, and G command on my. In my case, that's the source code of an app in Angular, of a first component, actually. In the application component, I have a class. I'm sure you can read this code even though you didn't know TypeScript yet. I have a class. The class is annotated with that component. We know what is an annotation. So it's a metadata, right? So we specify a template URL. Sorry, a template um, for the HTML. If I want to have it in a separate HTML file, I can do that. In this case, I inline it. So what else? I have a constructor. This is how it's done in uh, TypeScript. No, no, no class name, which is, would be the same as in Java. Then what I say, I'm, I need to get the product, right? And then I subscribe to it. Uh, Angular internally uses RxJS, which is reactive programming. So we use data push in many cases. In any case, HTTP is uh, consumed using subscribe. So I'm subscribing the data. Whenever I got the data, I assign it to this product. Product is an array. And product is bound to the UI in a loop, star and G4, meaning loop through that array, and for each element, build for me a new LI element. That's it. So that was a crash course on Angular. So this is what my client is. So there is no miracles. So demo, I did this demo. I generated the client project already. Now I need to automate deployment. How do you deploy Angular apps? How to do that? Of course, there are different task managers, uh, uh, Grunt and Gulp. It uh, used to be very popular in JavaScript world. The, uh, Gr uh, Gulp is still still popular. Grunt is going away. But even be, be, even Gulp is not needed for our deployment for now. So the thing is that NPM, uh, Node Package Manager, is a guy similar to Maven. But it uh, installed packages from npm.js.org. But the goal is the same. It comes with so-called NPM scripts. And PM scripts allows you to define uh, commands, right? So, for example, if I say, say I define uh, a command build, and I actually want to run this. I define post build, and I actually I want to run that. Pre-deploy, I run these two commands. And two ampersands means together. One command and then the other one. So, what I can do in this case, by using smart naming conventions, I can create a chain of executable commands. In this case, I'm saying, uh, build command means run for me actually and g build uh, dash prod uh, with optimization. Build the bundle with optimization. And 
Uh, npm scripts are smart enough to understand, ooh, but, but you have post build, right? So it means that I need to run this command right after the build. So it'll automatically run for me this command, npm run deploy. And when it tries to run and uh, deploy, it'll go and find, oh, deploy is here. But you have pre-deploy, right? So I need to run first pre-deploy and then deploy. So by running one command, ng build, sorry, npm run build, it'll run four of these. What are they doing? One of them, the first one is building bundles, optimized bundles. The size of this app will be like 100 kilobyte total. Then I will do deploy. De in deploy, I, I said I want to copy files from my disk directory where the bundles are built into the server directory. This is my uh, Spring Boot app in the server directory. Uh, but I want to do pre-deploy. So RimRough is a cross-platform uh, utility to delete directory and make dir mk, mk dir p means create directory. Works on the same. Yeah, the same on any platform. So what I'm doing, I'm creating a static directory under my screen, Spring Boot app. Uh, look at this line. Server and client in my example are located are simply sibling directory. So what I'm saying, go one level up, then to server and so on, and remove this directory or create a new one and so on. So that's the, that's the thing that I want to do. And I'm using these three utilities for that. Copy files, make dir p and rimrough. And when I will do all that, uh, then my Spring Boot uh, app will look like this. Under the static folder, I will have all these bundles. This is my Angular app deployed under Spring Boot. So what do I do next? Yeah. What do I do next? To run all that, um, I need to install additional utilities. These uh, RimRuff, copy files, and so on. Package JSON in Angular is similar to POM XML in Java. You specify all dependencies in there. So I need uh, to install a couple of additional files, which are these three utilities I just showed you. Mm, showed you the De dev dependencies, right? Right. So I need these three guys. Let me save it and let me. I'll open up another terminal over here and I will do npm install, for example. Not the only. It'll it'll check the dependency and it'll install just three three guys that I will need. Also, I will need to add this deployment script in the script mm, section. I don't need all that that was generated for me, but I will I will add the new one. Mm. This re, this uh, oh no, this is wrong. Uh, I will add one second. Mm. NPM scripts, these scripts, yes. So what I will do, uh, you saw them on the slide, now I just copy pasted them. So what I will do, I will do ng npm run build, npm. Actually, let me go and check to make sure that I have clean directory. I am in IntelliJ IDEA now, and I am looking at the resources. The static folder is empty. It's my Spring Boot app. What I will do, I will come back here, and I will run the command and the command build, which actually will run the, the full command. npm run build. It's supposed to see now it's building the production version of the app. It'll build it in the folder dist. After that, it'll take the content, all the bundles, and copy them over into Spring Boot app. Right. When I was doing ng serve, when I was doing ng serve. I did not work with actual files. I didn't move files anywhere. Everything was happening in memory in my web dev server. Right, but then you got the 404. So then... I got the 404, but uh, I don't have time over here. I would add an extra file, little file, and I would say redirect all my requests, and I wouldn't get a 404. Okay. So it doesn't like something. It doesn't like. It doesn't like. Probably installed it went fine. Let me let me do do it again. Install of these utilities didn't went went well. Let me do this. Yeah, now it went fine. So see that it ran all these commands. Now if I go back to my uh, Spring Boot app uh, in there, I see stuff in there. See this? This is was created just now, just a minute ago. Let me restart the server just in case, the, the Spring Boot server. 
And when now when I will hit uh, 8080, I am going to be get back my Angular app and which make immediately a request for products and I will get the products populated. So let me go back to the browser. So we just created new front end and deployed on the Spring Boot and there were no J-Hipsters at all. I did, it's not manual manual, but uh, I was using generators only on the client side. Now let's, let's move to the main part of the presentation, which is uh, J-Hipster. What is that? J-Hipster is an open source, actually no, this is my picture. When I was young, when I was young, I just need to know a couple of tools, couple of tools. Look at this slide. Anybody knows all of these? Because if you don't, one person, so you can apply for a job in New York City. <laughs> if you know, if you, if you have missing one of these, I mean, they don't even take your resume. I mean, I, I really feel sorry for young people who have to know all that. In my case, front end, SQL database, you're set for life. This is what I thought. Not, no, I still have to learn. So let's talk about jhipster. jhipster is a code generator, but it uses some other code generators. jhipster is based on Yeoman. Yeoman is a popular code generator that can generate many projects in many languages. So jhipster is an, opini an opi opinionated Yeoman generator that can generate for you Angular on the front end and Spring Boot on the back. The back end, the service, the server side can be structured differently. You can create monolithic apps when Angular will be deployed inside the war, or you can build microservices app when you will have a gateway which will talk to different services. Look at this. It has 340 contributors, seven, more than 7,000 stars on the GitHub. So you can imagine that it is a pretty popular project. So why use it? Because it will generate for you a basic CRUD app uh, in minutes, you'll have Angular on the front and uh, Spring on the back. Eliminates manual work. A lot of things that uh, you would be writing manually, you, you don't need to because it'll be generated for you. Besides that, it'll show you best practices, how to write code. You can generate the, the project and you can read the code and see how people do this. And you can see, uh, obviously, simplified deployments on different clouds. So unfortunately, to get started, you need to install all these uh, packages. Uh, like Yeoman, uh, Yarn, it's an alternative to NPM. And then, uh, then you'll say, install for me jhipster generator. And then when you're ready, you need to create a new folder, CD into that folder and say jhipster. And this is where your process starts. This is where you start generating your app. Let me, let me see if I can do this now. Where am I? I am in the Spring Data NYC. Let me create a new folder. Uh, make dir um, nyc cd nyc i am in there so if i will just enter j hipster it'll start asking me questions it'll start asking me questions about what we want to generate and it has tons of options mm, let me bring it up um, it, I'm using the latest version 4.5.5. Now, it asked me, what do you want? Do you want monolithic app? Or maybe you want microservices app? Or maybe you want microservices gateway? I, don't, I will not be doing demoing this part today, but just for you to understand, um, if you will build microservices app, you will need to generate these two guys twice, separately. First, you will generate the app, which will be your microservice or service. And then you will generate a gateway. Gateway is another Java app, but this is where you will be deploying Angular. So you, will, you may have multiple ap applications, but Angular will be deployed in the gateway. For now, we will just generate a monolithic app. Uh, what is the base name of your project? And we see, I'll take a default. Otherwise, I would enter something else. What is your default Java package name? Again, they offer a little, it's fine with me for now. Do you want to use jhipster registry to configure, monitor, and scale your app? jhipster registry is a, a service for discovery of microservices. In the first presentation of the day, uh, you've been seeing this console, right, which is a service discovery product. They, these guys also created uh, another, their own uh, service discovery uh, uh, offering based on Eureka. So you can use any of these. For, for uh, for the monolith, you don't need to do this anyway. So I'm, I don't want to do this now. What authentication you want? 
Java web, Java, uh, JSON Web Tokens, or JOT, they pronounce it. Yes, it's fine. What type of database you want to generate? Because it's going to be generating a CRUD app. Is this going to be a SQL database? Uh, yes. Uh, or you can select one of these guys. I'll keep SQL. What, do you, what production database you want to use? And you can pick one of these. Let it be MySQL. For development, though, they are saying, what do you want to develop with? H2 is a very nice uh, Java database, you probably know. And if you will use this version, H2 was in memory, it was a disk-based persistence. You can even restart the app, and guess what? Your data will not be gone. So they will be persistent. Now, what caching system do you want to use? Let's use EHCache, or you can use Hazelcast, makes sense if you have distributed system with microservices. What build system you want to use? Maven, Gradle, Maven, of course. Uh, do you need social login or anything? No, I don't need that. W what Angular you want to use? The old one, AngularJS, or the new one? I will use Angular 4. Next, uh, do you want to use SAS uh, for styling? No, I don't want to use SAS. Uh, would you like to enable initialization support? Yes, I would. Uh, what languages? Uh, they support like 26 or 27 languages now for the front end, right? So English, what else do you want? I will pick Russian. These days, guys, if you will get the chance to work for federal governments, you'd better know Russian. <laughs> so they may ask you to create an, no, it's, I'm not kidding. You may, they may ask you to create an app for, me, for managing like secret, secret conversation uh, between Russian and American diplomats. So it's, it's there. You will see how easy it is. <laughs> so. Then, would you like to install other generators? No. Now it's generating things. So now uh, the hipster starts working, and it'll generate the entire project. While it does it, it, it'll be pretty fast, but I'll switch back to slide. So it can generate monolith or web services. If it generates monolith, this is what we do now. It'll generate for you a Spring Boot app, which will have in turn inside Angular and Java, uh, Java code already. Uh, this is a slide that shows all these <laughs> answers that I provided. By the way, if you go to slideshare.net uh, slash yfain, the slides are already there. So how do you run uh, a deployed monolithic app? This is what we are about to do. Um, uh, run just uh, Maven wrapper when the app is done, and your app should be ready. The other choice is if you want to work in dev mode with Angular, you can keep running this additional web server for Angular, so you can head, have hot uh, reload on the front end. All right, so uh, this is how to package the app. But let me go back to my uh, console. Uh, it's still, it still run compilation. It'll be done pretty soon in, a, in several seconds. And then I'll start it. I'll start the app, and I'll show you. This app will be a ready-to-go CRUD app, and you uh, it'll have configured users. One of the users will be a user by default, and the other one will be admin. If you log in as a user, you will not see an admin menu. If uh, Otherwise, you will. So it's done. The whole thing is done. So what I will do, I will run this. It, it prompts you, right? It prompts you how to start. I will do dot .mvn wrapper, mvnw. So now it's starting the app. And I will go to localhost 8080. By the way, do I run anything in there? Probably. That old Spring Boot app, I don't want it. Liquibase is the, it's like a, like a git for databases. It, it'll, it'll create entities for you, and it'll keep track of changes. See, it started on 8080, localhost 8080. Let me go and hit it. Localhost 8080. Right, it's done. Right, so this is a ready to go app, and um, it shows you the the app. It's already with initialization as promised. Let's go to Russian. See how easy it is. You're switching back. They use um, all these texts are sitting in separate files, so you can translate them into any of these languages. So now I, let me log in. Uh, I will sign, sign in. If I will sign in with the user, user, user is a password. 
then I'll see these menus. As of now, I don't have any entities because I didn't create any. But if I will sign out and I, if I will sign in as admin, I will see an extra menu. Admin, and the password is admin. See, I have administration menu right there. Everything was already generated for you in Spring. Of course, it uses all these goodies that Spring gives you, but still, it's pretty nice. You have all this menu, like you can manage users, create new one, remove, and so on. You can see metrics of your app, all these requests, total memory, and, and everything. It's already there. Very convenient for the admin. Health of your app. You can check the configuration and uh, configuration of your Spring Boot, Spring App, all these different things. Then you, you also see, you can do the audits, who uh, logged in and when, uh, logs. You can configure on the fly all these Spring logs. You can uh, change them on the fly as need be. And API, as a swagger, gives you documentation right away for you, all your REST uh, endpoints that you have. And if you want, you can, uh, you can click on any of these. And you can try JSON. You can try to get and post. And you, you, you'll see the examples of how to do things. And you can even run them over here. So let me go back to this menu. Uh, what, I want, what else I want to show you? Who is this? I don't call anyone. No, it's not me. All right, so anyway, so there is no entities. No entities generated yet, right? Somebody wants to talk to us. Yeah. They want me to send a request for proposal or estimate. I know, I know. All right, so let's, so we are done with this part. What is missing? Entities are missing, of course, right? So let me go back to slides. Let me go back to slides. Yeah, interesting, just one slide. Look at this. If you, if you have time and if you'll try, try it out, go to HTML, you will find that in HTML they uh, use these special uh, variables, right? And in these variables, if you will open up um, the, there is a whole bunch of files in the, they use in G translate and there is a folder in there. You can just go and you can convert, uh, translate into the language of your choice. So now let's talk about entities. You need to generate entities, uh, and I am using beer for an example. Uh, there are different ways for, to generate entities. A, you can uh, just start a, a command line program, and it'll ask you, to, well, give me a name of the entity, which fields do you need, and so on. And you can define them uh, on the command line. Or you can use the so-called JDL Studio, like you see a screen over here, and the URL is over there. On this screen right there, you start typing things on the left, and it'll generate for you a diagram. And they also have another tool for the UML. If you, um, if you are here, then you can click on the button. You, you will just create your diagram over here. Then you click on the button, download to a file. And then you can import from that file into your uh, newly, generated, newly generated app. Right? So how to do this? Uh, you can do, again, it's a yeoman command. I have this beers.jh in my root directory. So you can just take this command and you can run it in the folder of your uh, project. Let me kill it. Mm. Uh, it it starts generating uh, new entities for my app based on the file that I uh, just showed you. And uh, it uses it. It asks you, do you want to um, re, you, do you want to override this liquid base master? Because liquid base keeps track of all your changes in the database. I will say all re, uh, override everything. And when it's done, I will restart this app and you will see that I already have two entities. One of them is category and the other one is beer. Just a, a minute and I'll be done. Then I'll restart the app and you will see that it worked. Not cacheable, it's fine. So it's done. Now, let me try to run this again, the app. And we are, I, I'm expecting to see two menus in the entities, and I should be able to enter the beer, the category, and stuff. So it's done. Let me go back to localhost 8080. 
All right, so let me go to entities. And I say category and beer. So let me enter the category, create a new one. Uh, what I, by the way, they use uh, Twitter Bootstrap for styling in this case. They, they generated all that. So I'll create a category, you know, and then I'll go to the beer, create a new beer. And what is a beer? I like Lef from Belgium. Great beer. <laughs> Price 10. By the way, uh, speakers of this conference were invited to a very nice uh, gathering uh, two days ago, and I tried an excellent beer. If, if you like beer, uh, Brooklyn Dark Chocolate Stout. Perfect. I'm telling you. It's, it's pretty close on the 27th Street. All right, category, which one is itself? I have the only one. And save. Anyway, I will not take your time. So it works. You can delete. So the whole crowd is there. You can say, that's great, but it, my app will not look like this. Of course it won't. Of course. If, if it would work like you want it, they would fire you. Why, why would they need you, right? <laughs> so you still need to program, unfortunately. But it's easy to go in your code and check. Oh, I don't need this guy. I want to log off my company. You go ahead and do it. All right, so let me finish with the slide real quick. So uh, this is something that will be coming soon. I actually asked for it. I opened the sort of feature request for engines. But this part is done already. It's done. It looks big, but it's not. Uh, basically, if you want to generate gateway and service and um, microservices, you can use one of these uh, tools. You, you, you will specify console or uh, jhipster registry, and it will generate everything for you. Your gateway is a place where you will be deploying your Angular app. You can have as many microservices as you want, and it will be generating generate generate this for you. In case with console. It was presented in the morning. What you will need to do, you will need to generate an app for the gateway, generate app for each of the services that you want, and you will run the console. So gateway is the place where your Angular will live. All these microservices will be automatically registered to your, in your console discovery service, so it will work fine. Um, and to run the app with microservices using Docker and console, again, they generate for you all these configurations for Docker as well. Assuming that you have it installed, Docker Compose, this is how you start a console, the easy way to start. In, in the other terminal window, you start the back end. For example, you have Microsoft One on this server, on this port, and then you run the gateway. This is a place, also Java app, but with Angular in there. So this is how you can start the app. There is plenty of deployment options to all these clouds if you, if you want. And uh, this is pretty much it. So these are the links. And... Uh, Thank you very much.